five, four, three, two, one. John Hosking, Graham Eccles, you know who I am, and Blackburn Cathedral are go. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to a very, very special um, live broadcast here from Beauty and Sound tonight, where we are using, uh, certainly for the very first time here on BIS, the new, I'll say newly released, it hasn't yet been released, uh, Hauptwerk organ of Blackburn Cathedral. Over the past two nights, uh, you may have seen and heard a marvellous organ demonstration and an organ recital on the pipe organ in uh, Blackburn, given by uh, the wonderful John Hosking, who just joined me on the bench uh, for, for the Thunderbirds March. Uh, and tonight and tomorrow night we'll be um, featuring the Hauptwerk version of it uh, through much fun, much hilarity, and hopefully some um, right notes along the way. I just want to draw your attention the very opening of this uh, concert, two things. So the organ is being released at the very end of this program. Now what we are going to do to mark the occasion of the organ being released is John, as some of you will know, John is a rather flamboyant and talented improviser. So John is going to improvise at the very end of the program. We don't know on what yet because you guys are going to suggest themes 
for him to improvise on. Now these have to be sort of adventy, Christmassy themes, all right? They can't be all the single ladies or a Beatles hit because I don't think John will know how, they, the, how that goes. It has to be appropriate for the season, okay? So get your thinking caps on, get suggestion, and we will have fun later on. Meanwhile, I'm going to play, rather foolishly, I'm going to play the Takata BWV 540 uh, in F by J.S. Bach. Um, I wouldn't mind if during this you looked the other way. <laughs> so here we go, let's have some um, J.S. Bach, shall we? You know I like to start our recitals here on BIS with Bach. And what a better piece to start than this Takata. Here we go.
I cannot recommend to anyone opening a recital with that. <laughs> it's one of the most daunting pieces of bark, I think. So today is going to, um, tonight is going to basically consist of the three of us uh, playing. We're going to take it in turns to uh, play. So I'm now going to hand over to uh, Graham Eccles, um, one of the, the driving forces behind this new organ. Graham is going to hop onto the organ now and introduce his, uh, his piece to you. So Graham, over Thank to you. Thank you very much, Richard. Well, what a pleasure to be here today and for the first time play this amazing console. I've made one or two Hauptwerk consoles myself in, since lockdown. It's one of the things I've done. And, uh, but to experience this is something different. So thank you very much for the um, invitation to be here. So uh, I'm going to play a piece that I played many years ago in the 1980s for ARCO back in Kensington Gore. So um, Fiat Lux by Dubois. So um, it's a lovely piece which suits this organ um, beautifully really. And um, I'm just trying to find the number on here. So yeah, it um, starts softly and builds up to um, a really nice fortissimo near the end in a French style, hopefully. So here we go. Not on that one. <laughs>
Thank you, Graham. I'm just going to quickly chip in here. John's up next, but I've just seen some comments from people saying the sound level is poor. Now, I, I, con I contest those comments. It's not poor at all. It's just too quiet. There's a difference between too quiet and being, being poor. So let me just turn up the volume. Very simple to do in how it works. The, the issue that we've been uh, having, that's not really an issue, but it's this organ goes from very quiet to very, very loud. And particularly when Johnny is playing, it does go very loud. Um, so we just need to make sure it doesn't clip because if it clips and distorts, that is when you say the sound quality is poor. So choose your words carefully because I need to uh, I need to adjust based on what you are saying. Okay, so I've just turned up the volume. Should we have a full chord? Should we have a chord of big chord of C major? You can all do a sound test together, complete with shamard. Let's see what it sounds like. Here, it sounds loud and loud in here. Yeah. Now I've turned up the organ by four decibels and it will not go louder than that. Okay, so hopefully now that's better. Okay, so I'll keep an eye out in the chat for this next piece. John, over to you, my friend. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. It's great to be here back at Beauty and Sound and to also be bringing our organ at Blackburn Cathedral, hopefully into your homes if you choose to purchase it after tonight's concert. We're going to play for you Dennis Baydar's variations on Indulci Ubolo to hopefully show you um, a lot of different colours available on this organ.
I hope you enjoyed that and um, have been able to see the um, wide range of colour available on the Blackburn organ. Next, um, it's a bit of a case of little and large. Uh, Graham and I are going to play the Wes the Organ duet, um, which we've done several times before. You'll have probably seen there's a great difference in size uh, between um, our heights. Um, thankfully, there's not a big pedal part in this, but I think, Graham, you'll need to wind up the bench before we start, so I'll let you do that. Okay, a little bit. <laughs> so, yes, because Wesley goes below bottom C. Yeah. The uh, old English way. So, uh, what we'll do. Well, this takes me back years, because I used to play this with my uh, former organ teacher, Philip Underwood. So, thanks, Philip. I don't know if you're listening, but uh, here we go again. And, uh, yeah, this is the third movement, the fugue. The words need to end. <coughs>
Thank you very much, guys. Well done. Thank you, Richard. <sighs> it was me next. That's why I've all. That's why I've all hopped great off. View, isn't it? Brilliant. It's it? really long, but it's good. It's it's such good fun. Is that builds up the tension, doesn't he? That pedal G. So was that um, Samuel Wesley or Samuel Sebastian? Samuel. Samuel Wesley. Mm. I guess that makes <coughs> sense. Right. I'm going to um, just play a very very small ditty now. Um, so John and uh, Graham on the. Not, are the, um, not only people who are advertising uh, a, a product tonight, they've got the Blackburn sample set, uh, but I've actually got my Call for Composers, uh, which you all know about now, don't you? Um, in this piece, in this book, there's a piece by a young chap who has appeared on BIS um, before, um, Adam Heron, and he wrote a piece called A Christmas um, uh, Pastoral, which is very sweet, and I thought I would play it just to, um, <coughs> oh, that's the, um, the, the, the film set destroying itself. That's, what was it? A picture of me and, and uh, 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 Winchester. Oh, well, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, blame someone for playing too loudly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazingly, it hasn't broken. That's no, not just, just take it over there. I don't, I don't want it now. Thanks. <laughs> so I'm going to just um, play this Christmas, Christmas pastoral with a number of flutes, namely the eight and four on the swell, and then the eight, four, and two on the grate, which is very Christmassy like. Uh, I won't be using the Jimbo Stern because it's a bit too loud for this piece. And I'll, but I will be using the clarinets on the organ. So the solo clarinet and the choir cromorn. So, oh, someone needs to go on. Can you press, um, uh, why don't you press the top left button now?
So that was the uh, Adam Heron um, ditty from the um, Call for Composers volume, which can be purchased from you know where, beautyandsound.co.uk. I hope you don't mind me giving you a quick plug. Um, available from all good bookstores. Beauty and sound only, actually, it's the exclusive. <laughs> um, cool, right, over to Johnny Bombard. John, you need to get Hugo to help you move that bench. He's an expert at it. Yeah, he's, oh, is he, he is actually quite yeah, good at winding really it up good. and down. Uh, he worked out yeah. how it works and he's, he's now very keen. Just to remind everyone that you are still- I highly approve. <laughs> You are still able to request uh, themes. We've had a couple already, actually. Uh, I've for... seen a few in the chat. Ah, so John has um, got, is going to improvise at the very end of the um, recital on a couple of themes, Christmas themes, um, and you want to make the most of that because it's rather fabulous at doing it. So leave them in the chat and we'll, we'll capture them. John's going to play with some standing up, by the looks of it. <laughs> right, hello again everyone. The thing that I love most about the Blackburn Cathedral organ is just how versatile it is. Um, you've heard some Granger, you've heard some Bach, you've heard a very perky pastoral, and now you're going to hear it in English mode in Noral Rothsborn's Prelude on the London Derriere. Um, you, you, you'll hear the theme stated twice, first of all on the solo clarinet, then um, on the eight foot foundations accompanied by the strings each time and then it will build up to the full organ and die away again. I hope you enjoy this.
good. Lovely stuff. That's very musical playing, I thought. I know. Was that a clarinet yeah. at the end? Nice clarinet. It was indeed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well spotted. Yeah. I have to show the guys your Christmas jumper in a minute as well. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe after this um, toe tapping piece. <coughs> I should point out our brand new Blackburn Cathedral Music Department ties as well, which are hot off the press as it were. <laughs> um, now for something completely different, the Millennium March by Ronald Keeping. Um, I think you'll only have heard this if you were either a very close friend of Ronald's or if you perhaps um, tuned into my um, channel from time to time. Ron Keeping was the organist of St Austell Parish Church in Cornwall for many years and ran a choir that it said was much better than that in Truro Cathedral which was rather good itself um, at the time. Um, Ron was a keen pilot, I'm glad to say that his flying was much better than his driving which was rather scary. Um, he, he, he was a real eccentric, um, he passed away only a couple of years ago. Um, he also um, designed and voiced a lot of the content digital organs. Um, it's a privilege to know Ron um, and he wrote this piece for a brass band and the marking on the score says the 17th of August, the day, bef the, the day before my birthday, 1997.
our toes were well and truly tapping in that one, John. Good to hear. I also saw um, that on that final chord there, the um, levels were just a, very much in the red. So I think, surprised. well, yeah, so I think um, we've turned the organ up so much now that it's actually now in the red. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that'll be great. Has anybody asked John how it compares sitting here in Richard and uh, my dining room playing the Blackburn sample set compared to the real thing? Well, maybe we can talk about that in a bit. I'll get Are you on going the... to have a little Q&A well, in a bit? maybe we can take some questions and answers okay. later I think be... I'd like to ask that question. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can do that before the improvisation. Okay. Have a little bit of a Sounds chat. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Over to Graham. Do you need a page to look at? I'm all right for this, thanks, John. Yeah, this is only a short one. It's a nice little piece that I've discovered. Well, I've had this book since 1983, I see, but I've only learned some of the pieces just recently. It's got John Sanders to Carter at the back. And of course, John Sanders was at Chester for a while before he went to Gloucester for a long time. So um, it's nice to make these connections. But Cloister Garth is a lovely little piece showing off the soft stops of the uh, Blackburn set, um, showing off clarinets and things and nice flutes. And it's a la Sarabanda, like a saraband. But it's interesting because it's in 3 4 and 2 4 alternately. So it's a sort of, well, for Herbert Brewer, that's, I would say, you know, a little bit progressive, really, changing time signatures like that. So, um, Cloister Garth by Herbert Brewer. John. Hi. Oh yes, down, down it goes. Can I pinch the microphone, please? For a cost. <laughs> Thank you. When the um, question for new organ at Blackburn Cathedral came about, um, 
there was actually already a Kavai Coal in place, which had originally been at the West End, but had been mutilated uh, beyond redemption, really. Um, so John Bertolo, in conjunction with Francis, Francis Jackson, designed the organ. John was very much moved by having listened to broadcasts of French organs on the radio during, I think, the Second World War, he said. Um, so he was very, very keen that the organ should have a French flavour, particularly in the reeds, combined with the um, Vet Principe style principal choruses. So I thought, um, what better way to showcase um, this part of the organ than to play some Vienne for you. So this is the Allegro, the first movement from the second symphony.
Well done, John. Excellent. Thank you very much. Excellent stuff. That's a really fabulous piece, that, isn't it? The whole, the whole symphony is really, really sensational as well. Amazing. I, I learned it when I was 18 and first performed the whole symphony at St Martin in the Fields, which is another walker in oh, yeah. a fairly similar style to Blackburn. Oh, not quite, yeah, it's not quite as... Different action, though. Know? Do, do different action, yeah. tracker action, and it's not quite as outrageous. Um, <laughs> but doesn't right. sound like many organs are quite as outrageous well, as Blackburn. I think you're probably <laughs> right. <laughs> no, there are very few, actually. Um, Gloucester, R.I.P., was outrageous. Yes, yes. Well, you have, yeah. Yes, well, that, that was extremely colourful. Yeah. Um, so, Caroline, have you got any... Um, do you want to bring the questions over? Um, no, I, I, I was looking at them earlier and I couldn't read your writing at all. Okay, do you want to hop on then? I just, I just hold oh, another opportunity for them to see your Christmas jumper. Oh, yes. Oh, I'll just wax the there, look, there it is. Look there. Well, don't, don't cause too much carnage. Christmas jumper. No, don't move, Richard. Right. Uh, this question came in from Free Read. How would you arrange this set on three manuals? So, if you just had a three manual console, would you have a floating division for the solo? I think that would probably be the most sensible thing, yes. And, and you can always use the solo to choir, copula, um, if you want to play a solo on something. Um, you don't actually have to assign the solo to the choir um, in order for something like that to work, which makes it really simple. And the camera is here, isn't it? Yes. I'm used to you saying, yes. don't look in the don't camera. Don't look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yes, John, you can now look at the camera. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think and it really, really does depend. You can, you can put the solo on the choir, swell on the choir. You can do it, it's all sorts, can't you? Yeah, but I think it's yeah, most sensible. It's joy of Hartford, it's so versatile. So, yeah, so versatile. And um, Ian Garden, who obviously is a lay canon at Blackburn, said actually the, the organ used to be three manuals, is this correct? That's right. So, so when the organ was first built, it was only three manuals, and the original specification is available as an alternative, actually, on our Helpfix set. I don't know, can you show that on the screen, Richard? Or no, I can, yes. Is, no, I can, just bear um, with me a sec. Um, the but first time I encountered this organ, it was a three manual back in the 80s again when I was at RNCM. And Justin Waters took me up, he was the assistant organist at the time, and we had a wonderful time there. And uh, Justin and I took our FRCOs at the same time, so uh, that brings back memories as well. So, um, there you go. yeah, so this is the so, so that's the extended that's specification, the extended, yes. And then if I go to um, the historic. That's it. Historic. So, so that's the original um, specification of the organ. Um, you can see there's a crumb on in the swell, which isn't in the current swell, but that's actually the current. So the clarinet, because it was um, felt it had more clarinet qualities. And you see on the positive, the only chorus read was the 16 foot Holtz Regal, which is my favourite stop. <laughs> Um, and that's also where the imperial trumpet was played from. So the fourth manual was added in 2001 by uh, David Wood under the guidance of David Briggs. Indeed. Uh, so I think whilst we're, at, whilst we're on this screen, we can have a quick look at what we've got. So we've got a nice picture of the console here, and, um, which you would have seen from the previous um, two videos on BIS, the de organ de demonstration and John's fabulous recital. Um, then you've got the left and the right screens. Oh, should I demonstrate the uh, yeah, illumination? Well, yeah. Oh. Yep, so that's like your old Viscount. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's a bit nicer than the old Viscount, isn't it? I miss I the mean, Viscount. Well, you know, it was all festive, wasn't it, in Christmas services with its little lights? It added to the, <laughs> the lights. And then you've got this, the single uh, sub which we've been using tonight, and then a tab for all the pistons as well. That's on a separate screen, lovely uh, and clear. I think you'll see. And then the controls tab where you can uh, adjust and you can see here actually that we've got the ambience uh, and the, the, the uh, diffuse, which is actually the rear, the furthest away microphones turned down quite a lot. Um, and the, the direct ones turned up so you get that lovely uh, clarity. I think this organ responds really well to um, that clarity actually. I think that my uh, production of your recital, John, a lot of it uses the very close microphones um, which I think it, it responded well to. And then you've got the historic tab uh, there. Okay, let's go back. Uh, I think actually, is it fair to say that the, the organ will uh, go through an update? 
for various updates in the future. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Microphone, microphone. Uh, yes, I've had some friends uh, helping us with that. Mark Pybus oh, and uh, Peter Neal doing photography and help on the website. And we're going to, um, yeah, we, we're going to <laughs> do some updates on the um, visuals and things. So um, yeah. slightly work in progress, but I think... Hopefully you've enjoyed what you've heard so far. I think yeah. it sounds stunning. <coughs> so, hey, I'd like so, to just sorry. I'd like I'd just love to say thank you to everyone who's been involved with this project. Um, the chaps at Evens Song over in the states. Uh, Sam Sleeth, who's helped us out, he's been here today earlier on. He's in the chat. He's on the train, he's and he's got he's there, he's got yeah. enough signal to listen. Yeah, he's an awesome <laughs> chap, is Sam, and I met him for the first time today. Yeah, and Mark and Peter for helping with the. Um, stuff on the website so well done all yeah, but it is about to be released isn't it it is going it to is. come out this... you're, all, you, all you need to do is press a button press go thunderbirds are go um, in a minute in a minute Literally. yes blackburn is hang on go. hang on we have more questions oh, we have more, more questions. questions yes so actually that was my question wasn't there which, oh, which yes, was sir, how absolutely. does it compare playing your organ blackburn cathedral but not in blackburn cathedral in a carpeted modest sized dining room Fine, on a different console. How does it? How, how is it? Well, first of all, can I just say this console is incredible. It's so comfortable, and everything's exactly where you want to reach it, just as you'd expect from a Harrison replica console. Um, so, so, so that's absolutely brilliant, and I'm so excited to have played the organ finally because um, it's yeah, been it's here great. a year now, hasn't it? Um, as as, as yes. regards, does does it feel like the organ I play every day? The organ I play every day feels different almost every day, depending on where the console is. Um, I played for a carol service yesterday, and uh, the, the school teacher that was conducting it um, was quite insistent that I was able to watch her conducting, which I always try to avoid in every circumstance possible. Um, and um, so she asked me to move the console just a couple of feet, and the organ sounded completely different to fascinating. the um, previous position it was. If you put it in the centre of the nave, as happened for yesterday's recital, mm. Mm. Um, that's the best place to hear it, so, mm. so, so, sort right of the, the, the centre of the altar, because mm. you, you get both sides in stereo, um, and you get a better idea of what the organ sounds like in the nave. Playing it here, and probably what you're hearing, is how it would feel like if you were sitting at the front of the nave in the cathedral. So it's not like I experience it because the console is so much closer to the pipes, but it's certainly how it would feel um, further back in the building. And there are some very, very, um, you know, sort of obvious Blackburn effects. The eight, I don't, can people hear? Yes, yes. Yeah. The, the, the eight foot principle. Very obviously Blackburn. The the corne. There, Am I right? Like Did it. you ask for that to be turned up when you arrived earlier? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> bit, 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 bit of inside information. He wanted more corne. John wanted it louder. The, 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 the corne <laughs> is huge on, on, on the actual organ. And again, the Holtz Regal, which I can't get enough of. <laughs> That is very, very definitely Blackburn. You won't <laughs> find that anywhere else. Um, so, it's just, so yeah, it, it's just wonderful to hear how the organ might sound to others further back in the building. Terrific, thank you. Uh, so, and uh, Graham, presumably you know it really well as well. Would you say, uh, what's your experience of playing? On to today, well, it's just been such a joy playing this. It's such a wonderful piece of kit and congratulations. Yeah, well, I've got the sample set at home, not in its ultimate version but um, I tend to use headphones because of people above um, but it's been wonderful to hear that it through this setup and in a finished version and it just sounds really really awesome doesn't it mm. we're just building that tension for when they hit the no. go on sale button no. we're just building the tension here at BIS <laughs> we're good at that right a question from James Mossop how long did it take to record this organ from start to finish Ooh, five days it. five nights rather wasn't it? The first night we went in and we were all talking and having a good time and we sort of started recording about eight o'clock in the evening, was it John? Something like that? It could have been later actually. Maybe later. Anyway, uh, Francis, <laughs> I should have thanked Francis earlier, Francis Shepherd, the recording engineer, who did a fantastic job. And we started recording 
and you have to play each note, a short staccato, a longer one, and then a nice um, extended note. And we came out four o'clock in the morning that first night. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a long, laborious mm -hmm. process. But yeah, you suffer for art, don't you? And it's worth it in the long run. So yeah, five nights of that, and we took it in turns. But then, as, I, as I'm so sure Sam Sleeth would agree, I know Piotr Gorowski said this in the chat before, the recording actually takes no time at all compared to getting it into a sample set on your computer screen, uh, programming it, which does take a long time too, doesn't it? Absolutely. It does, especially with this amount of acoustic, apparently. And that's been a learning curve for me because that's all part of it. And it's not just the note that when it's playing, the note extends when you're not playing. And that's why these sorts of sample sets require a lot of RAM in the oh, yes, um, in terms of computing and yes I think to load this one up we'll, you'll need about 64 gigabytes of RAM if you load it in okay. its full um, version with the highest but, but, well I should actually the, same, the organ itself uses 64 gigs right. of RAM so yeah. the, the, um, I would recommend getting it get more than that yeah um, but you yeah. can load most of it in 16 bit for 30, on 32 gigs yeah. Don't forget, folks, Richard um, loaded Rotterdam for, uh, in 2020 with a modest laptop. What was your RAM on that original laptop? 16, 16, 16. gigs. It can be done. These big organs can be loaded. Um, so d d don't let that put you off buying it. You yeah. I'm sure there are ways you can get it working. Um, actually, you mentioned the acoustic. That was a question from Ian Garden, who, who know, oh, I think he knows the answer. Mm -hmm. What is the reverb in the cathedral? And he says, at full blast. Um, does it make a difference? Anyway, at full blast, what is the length of the reverb in the cathedral and how does this compare to anywhere else on the planet? It's um, six or seven seconds. Um, the, the weather affects the length of the acoustic. Uh, the amount of chairs in the building affects mm, the acoustic. Yeah. Um, you'll notice on a really hot, dry day, the acoustic would be much different to a sort of cold, rainy day. That's interesting, isn't um, it? Moisture in the air. Yeah. So, wow. so at, at the best, it, it's about seven seconds. And okay. you, as you would have heard yesterday, you, you leave go a chord and it just... It it's just a, time. Yeah, mm. it's just this sort of... Oh, the sound almost rushing at you. Oh, oh it's incredible. And yeah. Ian's words again, is this a challenge or is this to be cherished? Oh, it's to be cherished. It's never a challenge. It definitely is if you're a singer, isn't it? Yeah. If you're, if you're... Music, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it just helps the music come alive more, I, I think. And is it hard at Blackburn? I would say, knowing Winchester Cathedral, which is up the road here, if you go to an orchestral concert there, um, if you're far back in the nave, it's just all a bit of a muddy sound wall. Is that correct in Blackburn? You need to get a good good seat for your concerts. It depends on the registrations you're playing on, actually. Okay. Um, John Robinson, the director of music, and I spend quite a lot of time listening to the organ um, in the building when the other is playing it or, or someone else. Um, and so some surprising stops um, muddy the texture. The, the positive right. mixture, for instance, muddies the texture, which you wouldn't expect. Um, the swell reeds are quite clear. Um, as of sort of 842, you, you, you can hear lots of clarity everywhere in the building. So, so you've just got to be a bit careful how you register things, really. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really interesting. Thank you. Um, right, I think the final question was from Geoffrey. And, oh, actually, actually, Sam Sleeth answered this, but I'll let you answer it as well. Geoffrey is a novice Hauptwerk user, and he says, are you able to tune individual notes in a sample set? Yes, you are. Yes. Yeah, that's what Sam said too. Yeah. Lovely. I think that was all the questions, unless um, I've missed any, but I think I had. Well, I think we now uh, need to do the very exciting oh, yes, thing yes. of looking at the um, requests for themes for your improvisation. Oh, what about the press button? What well, about? I know, but we just need to make sure. I think, well, have we had some themes there here? There are quite a few. Um, yep. So we have had a few. We can't possibly do them all. So a mixture of things. Um, can leave this apparently on. the tune folder we have a gospel to proclaim, has, does that have a link to Blackburn Cathedral? I did catch that in the chat, actually. Ian Gardner um, thinks so. Yes, right. Anyway, so James Not James has asked for Hark the Herald. Right. Um, Richard Sterling has asked for Helmsley, Loki Comes with Clouds Descending. Yes. <laughs> 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 clouds yeah, clouds Descending. Yeah. Oh, dear. And then Doug has sort of suggested a load of Christmassy themes. It came upon the Midnight Clear, Angels We Have Heard on High and Wash Shepherds Watch. I think he was going for an angelic theme there. This organ isn't that angelic, though, is it? Some of the stops oh, yeah, might be. be. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, Hugo loved that stop earlier, by the way. Oh, he did, yeah. He, we, yeah. we put the, Zim the Zimbalstein on when he was saying goodnight. Oh, let's leave and that he on had here. a big grin on his face, didn't he? Did, he? Didn't he? Let's so, leave that there so John can just pick and choose uh, any of them. Um, 
Okay. I don't even know that you one, don't I'm afraid. Anti, I don't know what that one is. I don't, I don't know. Joy to the world. Is it? Uh, yeah, that's okay. A good one. Well, you choose, well, John. You, yeah, up to you. I right. think, well, whilst John's getting his um, brain in gear, um, I think Graham is going to head over to a very high tech laptop. Um, <laughs> connect. I hope our um, Wi Fi is still working, otherwise, it's you're not going so. to be able to do it. Yes, well, I just followed this up a few minutes ago. <laughs> Hugo nearly um, um, locked that laptop earlier. Did he? he drove his toy car over the keyboard. Oh, he could have pressed the um, sort of go live button on the laptop <laughs> and released it early. With his racing with car. With his racing car. Yep. Um, and are you going to let me know when it's um, sort of ready? Yes. Or It'll take a couple of minutes. Oh, will it? Yeah. Oh, OK. So I think when John starts this very flamboyant improvisation, which you're really in for a treat for, Graham is going to press some buttons and the organ will be available Can you do a drum roll buy. on it, John? Can you do a little drum wow. roll? It's funny you should say that. Because, <laughs> you know. Ooh. Ooh. That subwoofer does sound very good in here. Um, okay, so John, I think it's over to you. And okay. Graham, over to you. We'll get out of your hair. And um, <laughs> What, this one there is, I think? <laughs> Have everyone seen and, your Christmas jumper, by the way? And we'll... Um, yes, I've seen mine. Look. Dogs. And, and uh, yes, have fun.
Lovely. Where's the terrific? Where's the Where's the microphone? There it is. There we go. That was top notch. That was absolutely top notch. Yes, Thank well you done. Thank you very much. Um, and, and the the bit where you went down to silent was the most effective part. What can Just I Just to say? let the acoustic die away before you then came in again, completely intentionally. Absolutely. <laughs> On the blank piston. Yes, exactly. You press the blank one. I can see the Yeah. So I think the organ is actually now available to buy. Um, so if you go onto the website, right. the, the, there is a link to the website in the description of this video. Um, I just butt in and say that there is yeah. possibly a 24 hour turnaround um, between placing an order and having the final link sent out because it's not automated at the moment. Yeah, so it's a manual process to send out the files. Um, but get in there soon. I think the, um, the, earlier, the early birds get the best organs. Absolutely. I'm going to virtually sign them for you, which <laughs> might decrease their value, actually, so no, 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 I won't do that. Um, right, so if you want to hear more of this talented uh, young chap uh, on BIS, he's actually going to play with me tomorrow night at Virtual Church. Uh, hymns, the usual sort of Virtual ch uh, Church format. Uh, hymns, for Advent and... Uh, probably... Um, what are you doing? It's Richard's birthday tomorrow. So we're having a birthday virtual church. No, we're not having a birthday. And it's if an you're lucky, John church. might improvise on happy birthday. Well, I'm not going to improvise on happy birthday. Put it that way. We could do a duet improvisation. We could, yes. I'll just, um, yeah. I could press, I could pull out the, I could pull out the stops for you. Well, you did that earlier. I know, from another room in the, uh, in the house. Uh, so John's going to play with me. We'll, we'll, we'll take it in turns to um, play bits and bobs. Um, and John uh, is, is far, far, far better at um, reharmonising than I am. So that'll be very, very exciting. Now what? Can I just say, Garrett says, Koshiro could not have done it better. Well, there very we go. Kind. That's very just high praise indeed. So eight o'clock um, tomorrow night's usual virtual church time. Well, I think we ought to call tonight a, um, uh, to call tonight a night. We've been going for uh, an hour and 40. Graham, do you want to pop over? I will. And... Um, just to say thank you very much for coming round. Thanks uh, so much for having us and helping absolutely. us launch this um, project, which has been really enjoyable and it's been a learning curve for us all, I think, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it certainly but is. Well worth it. So yeah. I hope you all enjoy it as much as and we have. And Graham's been the brains behind starting this company up. So it's mm. uh, excellent. Well, thanks to Graham that this is yeah. available. Yeah. So, how many cathedral? This is the fourth cathedral, UK cathedral organ, isn't yes. it? Yes, it's it so the fourth, yes. 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 So. Yeah. It's well, well worth checking out. First one with three perspectives. Yes, I think. Yes, yeah, that's true. Mm. Yeah. Um, cool. So, thank you for coming. Um, thank you for Caroline yeah. for helping. Uh, thank you for to Josh Wilson to, uh, for helping behind the scenes. And as I say, I hope to see you tomorrow night to Virtual Church, eight o'clock. Me and V uh, will be on the bench uh, playing all sorts of bits and bobs, organ pieces. Birthday uh, fun. And, Stop mentioning that. It's not. It's no. It's not going to be birthday. It's Advent. Okay, Advent. <laughs> the preparation for Christmas, of course. Um, okay. So can you pass me the button, which is over there. We'll um, sign off by saying cheerio, and um, we'll see you all tomorrow night. Go and buy the organ. Well worth it. I've really enjoyed uh, having it here. Um, oh, what was that funky just... mutation you used for the Angel Gabriel? That was really good. Uh -huh. that was so that, funky. That was one of my trade secrets. Oh. oh. Trade secrets. I don't know if yeah. I should give it away. No. We'll all be zooming in on the yeah. screen. <laughs> you, can see, you can see the stops on the screen. Uh, I should say that I, I, I know the real organ because I recorded it for, uh, with John and I now have it in here. And I would say it does sound remarkably similar um, to the real thing. Very much so. The reeds and the, the planum, I think, um, is remarkably similar to what you hear in the building. It's a very, very exciting organ in many, many ways. I think we've captured it very well. So, and it's only going to get better over time with um, future updates and upgrades to it. So that's, that's good news. So until tomorrow, we'll say, we'll say cheerio. Um, you take care, you stay safe. Bye. Yes, goodbye. Cheerio. Bye. -bye. <laughs>